<sighs> All right. Hey, hey, welcome back. Welcome back. I believe my microphone is plugged in. Yeah. I'm okay. Sure cool. It's good. All right. All right. I've only that's done that once. That's yeah. That's that's, that's 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 a good start. All right. In any event, uh, this is um, uh, building responsive UI with Bootstrap, um, just like it says right there. Ah. Um, that. See, we're starting to get punchy. It's that time yes, of the day. Yes. Um, that's John Galloway. Sure am. Um, alongside John Galloway, I am merely Christopher Harrison. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're uh, rocking and rolling through, uh, through Bootstrap. Yes. And uh, I sort of teased just before we left that we were going to start making a lot of jokes about less being more. I'm going to try not to. Okay. But can I'm, I make a lot of jokes about less you, being more? Yes, you sure can. Excellent. I'm excited about this session. I got to tell you. So I've, I've done some work with Bootstrap. I've done my basic kind of design stuff. Uh -huh. um, and I had looked at less. I, I, I used less and, and demoed less in Visual Studio before. I hadn't used it with Bootstrap until okay. a few months ago when we started talking about this course. And, and I, I've been, I've had it on my bookmark list. I got to dig into this. It's awesome. Okay. So. I'm, I'm completely excited about this class. We're going to talk about introduction to less, you know, what it is. We're going to briefly look at some less workflows, um, meaning uh, less, uh, less is a compiler, compiles from this kind of meta syntax into CSS, allows you to do tons of great stuff, allows you to build custom versions of Bootstrap and just customize the heck out of Bootstrap. Um, but in order to use it, you need to figure out your workflow. I'm going to show you what I think is the simplest in Visual Studio, and then you can go from there. Perfect. Um, given our, we have one hour, I'm going to use the simplest one. And I'm going to show you then what I've done, just kind of quick. I got your HTML yesterday. Yes, you did. Because we've been working through this and figuring out. And I did not, I, all I did when you showed me your HTML was I said, that looks cool. Like, I didn't give any input on, oh, I need you to move this here or there. Right. So, and I, that was on purpose. I wanted you to give me real-world HTML. And and it's not even from MVC or anything. It's just real world HTML. Yep, just and I wanted to make HTML. it. I wanted to make it semantic using less. Perfect. And I did that. So, so uh, and then finally we'll wrap up with some kind of more advanced going further sorts of things. So first of all, real quick introduction to less. Less is a meta syntax for CSS. It gives you variables. Variables are great. So you can define one color up at the top and then use it throughout your CSS. And then if you need to change it, you can change it. You can also say, I would like to use this color and then I would like it 30% darker or 30% lighter. And you can nice. go through and you know do all these HSL. You can do all kinds of color uh, functions, just tons of calculations and stuff. So variables and functions, I think as programmers, we're all pretty used to. Mix-ins is a little bit kind of new to us, so or to some of us. So the idea is that you can define essentially a, a function and then call it from within something else. Or so, so, sorry, not a function, you can define a style. So here in my example, um, let me go in and try and draw here. Um, so I'm gonna go with the highlighter. So here we've got a style. So we've said, we've defined a class and an ID, the class of A and an ID of B, and we, for both of those we've set the color to red. And now, um, I, I can say I would like to call a mix-in class. So I'm creating a new class, and in here I'm saying just call A. And so that's going to bring in A. So whenever I use dot mixin class, it's going to go up here, and it's going to get that, and it's going to say use color red. And the same here, I can do that. Now here's another little secret, and you'll see when I'm, when I'm showing this off later. You don't need these parentheses to call mixins. It's maybe a little more uh, clear, but if there's if there's no variable that you're passing, if there's no parameters you're passing in, then you don't need that, okay? So, so that's kind of the general thing. We will look quickly at the uh, site here. I just want to show you on, this is the less site, lesscss.org. And so there, there's a few of these kind of uh, CSS processors, preprocessors. Um, another common one is SAS uh, and the, kind of the, the main difference I saw in the, in the beginning was Less was more focused on um, being able to, you could rename .css to, to .less and it would still work. Uh, SAS originally didn't do that. It was, uh, SAS stood for Syntactically Awesome Style Sheets. And then they came out later, uh, 
over time, they were kind of both had their advantages. Less allowed you to do one thing. SAS allowed you uh, easier calling of mix-ins and some other things. Okay. And and uh, so what they've both done over time is added in the features that the other had really. So there's not really, uh, to my way of thinking, there's not a huge amount of difference between the two. <laughs> I like some things about SAS uh, syntax more. Uh, they've got a special syntax called SCSS. Which okay. I don't even know what that is, sassy CSS or whatever. But that's kind of the CSS v v uh, variant of SAS. Forget all that business. Basically, uh, uh, less allows you to do things like, uh, if, if we uh, you know, take a look here, I'm defining a variable, and then I can go in and I can do, I can call, um, you know, I can apply logic to it. I can say I would like a box shadow, and here I'm calling an RGBA function on it, and here I've passed in 50% alpha, and I'm, I'm using that there. I can call things like lighten, or I can do, you know, I can do calculations on things. Here I'm doing something where I can say dot box shadow. When I call dot box shadow, I actually want you to do both of these things, throw in WebKit, box shadow, and box shadow. So you can do prefixing and stuff like that. Here we're doing saturation and lightning. So, you know, really some pretty slick stuff. So that's the less code that you write. And then that compiles out to this, right? So this is, you know, this is the actual compiled. This is what is sent to the browser. So what's nice is if I want to change something later, I change one variable and that ripples all the way through. So that's, that's really nice. Um, so there's there's tons more information here on you know language features you can dig into. I definitely recommend learning more about mixins specifically. Uh, mixins, um, you know, I showed you this example earlier where I can go through and and um, include things. Um, there's also support for nesting. So when you start going into nesting and using um, using mixins, you can do quite a bit with it. So I'm not going to dig into more detail for what we need to do today. This is about all you need to know um, is, is kind of some real high-level high stuff, okay? So that is our 20-second introduction to less. Okay. <laughs> so now let's talk about workflows in Bootstrap. I'm gonna start with the hard ways, uh, and I'll just show, I'll show you just enough for you to go like, oh, do I really have to do that? <laughs> and then we'll go with the simple ways, right? So um, what you're, you'll find out is, first of all, you can compile using Grunt. Um, and then secondly, I actually have these out of order. You can also set up compilation using ASP.NET bundling. And then thirdly, you can compile within Visual Studio using Web Essentials and Visual Studio support for less, okay? So first, let's take a look at Grunt. So this is what you'll find out when you go to the Bootstrap site. So here I am on the uh, Get Started. I went on the get started, and then I've got this compiling CSS and JavaScript. Um, so here, this is going to show you. You can go through and do this walkthrough. It's a, a little bit more uh, typey typey than you may be used to as a Windows developer, um, but it definitely, you know, definitely works. Um, so here, I've got npm installed, and I've got uh, I've got Grunt, and I've got Bower. So this is my uh, my you know command prompt here. So if I say npm, I've got npm on here. Um, I actually installed npm using chocolatey, which is my favorite way to install this kind of stuff on Windows. Um, that's at chocolatey.org. Chocolatey. Again, I'm going through this quickly. I don't actually expect you to do this. I'm just saying in case some people are really into this kind of command line business and want to set that up, maybe you want to automate it, here's, here's the pointers where to go. Mm -hmm. right? So I installed chocolatey. And then I did uh, cinst uh, npm, and it's going to say you've already got it, which is great. And so then after that, I used npm and I installed um, I installed Grunt and I installed Bower. So then uh, Bower is a package manager from within npm that you'll use to get stuff. So here I went in and um, I'm going to escape out of this real quick, and I'll do. Uh, let me see. Okay, so I'll make a new directory and we'll call this foo, and then we'll do cd foo, and we'll do bower install uh, bootstrap. And bower is? Bower is that package manager. It's a command line package manager 
um, that you'll see used with NPM. It is, uh, you can find it, I think it's bower.io. Everything cool these days is .io, so it's bower.io. And this will tell okay. you a little bit more about it. This is command line installer kind of thing. Okay. Um, so there you go, that's, that's what that is. So I did that and then I go, um, this tells me that it installed Bootstrap and then Bootstrap included a dependency of jQuery. Right? Okay, so it's sort of like Nougat. Exactly, same kind of thing. This is uh, NPM and node based, so it's kind of more command line. Okay. Okay, um, so then in here I'm gonna say uh, um, CD boot, um, Bootstrap and uh, CD Bower components. Okay, and there, this shows the distribution, what I've got there. So this has, if I went into dist, uh, this is the CSS, fonts, and JavaScript. This is what I've been using throughout the day inside of Visual Studio installed via NuGet. Okay. Partly showing this so you feel, um, see how good you've got it as a Visual Studio developer. Because <laughs> uh, this is the documentation of you know, what they're telling you, how to get things set up, right? Okay, so now I could say, uh, I believe I say, uh, it's like, I don't know who, how many people play video games, but there's kind of these walkthroughs, you know, and, we, and, and you'll follow the walkthrough and you kind of get to the difficult level. So here if I, uh, I'm, I'm, I've got this installed and then I can say npm install once I'm in the bootstrap directory. So I can say npm install, and this is going to use grunt. Grunt is a task runner command line task runner uh, run under NPM. And so it's, it's great for a lot of like build things. You can use it for running tests. Um, and it's actually, they're adding more support for it in Visual Studio in the future, which is part of why I'm spending a little bit more time talking about it than okay. I normally would. So then when, once I've finally done with that, then I can go in and I can say things like, uh, I could just type grunt and it'll run all the tests, or I could say grunt dist and it's just going to compile. And so this is running a compiler that will, whatever my less files are, then it'll compile that out. So I could say grunt, and this is or actually grunt. grunt, yes. And this is actually kind of pretty. It's going to go through, and I think there it shows that it built everything for me. Okay, so okay. This, this built your CSS files? This built those CSS files. Okay, from the less file. Yeah, so what this means is, uh, I'm showing you this for two reasons. One, if you want to go in and start building out, you, you know, you want to set up a workflow that works like this, you're going to see a lot of documentation if you just dig around in the bootstrap world. People will say, yeah, edit your grunt, do this and that, and mm -hmm. so you're welcome to do that. Uh, also, if you want your less files, um, you can just download a zip of them off the site, or you can get them this way. Okay. Okay, so these are the less files. Now here's a little bit of a mind blower. They actually write bootstrap in less. Everything is built using huh. less. Okay. And so all the source code, if you go out onto GitHub and you look up the source for um, bootstrap, so GitHub bootstrap, uh, you'll see that it's actually all the source code is is in less, and this that's just how they build it. Okay, so which actually makes a lot of sense because they do things like define variables. Okay, so here are, for instance, all those colors that we talk about. Things like, you know, those those kind of base colors, yep. brand primary, brand success. Those are all based here, and then you'll see things like they're using things like lighten. Right, so this is where they're defining stuff. And okay. then also you'll see things like typography sizes. These are all calculated. So this starts to make a lot more sense. These aren't just you know wild hackers whacking away on CSS. This is actually a pretty well designed system, and it all they do run builds on it to put everything together. Okay. You definitely see that when you start digging into things like the grid. Okay. So. A little bit of a, you know, taking you through the ringer a little bit, but I do want to show you how the sausage is made a small amount. So <laughs> that is how they build it, and this is how you can get total control of your bootstrap. Okay, now let's dig into, uh, if you want to 
you're probably not going to do this. You're probably going to go in and write some less files, and then you need to compile them out. One other way you can do that is compiling using bundling. So there are several different bundle transformers already written. Okay. So you can do, you know, uh, install package using, using NuGet, you can install this bundle transformer, and then when you write less files, that's automatically compiled to CSS as okay. well. Now, um, I'm just going to sort of, while we have this here, and it seems like a natural breaking point, yes. it will give you an opportunity to get a sip there. Um, somebody asked a question, you know, what problem does, does less solve? And this was something that you touched on um, at the very beginning, mm -hmm. which is when you start going in and utilizing um, Bootstrap very heavily, you notice that you get class after class mm. after class after class entered into your file. And that can just take up a lot of space. And also, as we saw, there's just a lot of classes to have to deal with. And trying to go in and modify all of those can, can be uh, a challenge. So that's what less is there to help solve. Yeah, exactly. And actually, I, I had some different blog posts. Um, there are some, there was one where somebody did just this beautiful example where they showed, here's how we used to write uh, HTML in the year 2000. And it was a lot of font tags and a lot of inline styles and a lot, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. it was just, that's how we did it. And then we, st we realized that that was kind of a mess and we wanted to start moving all that layout and design into a CSS. Okay. And so that is really the problem we're trying to solve here. And actually that's the, you know, that's a great, um, that's a great kind of uh, segue back into this. So we want to get to semantic markup. We want mm -hmm. nice, nice markup. So here's the problem. What we want is this up at the top. We want to do this. We want to say new album. Right. Somebody looking at our HTML doesn't need to know, hey, that's a bunch of bootstrap in it, right? <laughs> and we can move things around and we can write, you know, sane, clean, readable HTML. Yep. And but with bootstrap, in order to get things to look nice, we end up with all this junk. Okay. Serves a real purpose, but doesn't really belong in HTML. And, the, and the, you know, the right kind of division of labor is HTML is the content and CSS is the presentation. And right. we, we want to keep that presentation specifics out of our content. Absolutely. Okay, so how do we get there? And here's where we can put all those pieces together and we can say, all right, we know that, uh, th that Bootstrap is built using less mm -hmm. and you know, so they they compile things down. They also, as part of doing that, they include a lot of mix-ins. Mm -hmm. So we can define, we can go in and we can say, I would like to, when I say, I want to be able to write this HTML, and then I can go in and using less, I can say, I can define all of these bootstrap uh, classes. Right. And And so I can, here now I've got the right kind of separation. I'm using less, which is my, mar is my presentation, mm -hmm. and then my HTML is my content, and I'm able to move all those bootstrap classes into less and out of my HTML. Okay. So you'll see f for a lot of these, the mixins that you'll be using are, they look exactly like the classes that you would have used before. Okay. The ones that are kind of different are some of these utilities where you need to pass in these variables. So I need to say I want to use, you know, small column three, medium four, large six, right? So that's where you go in and, and you do kind of use this mix in syntax. All right. So here's the big fun. Here's what you've been uh, sticking around for is let's see it in action. Okay. So here I've gone in and, and I'll, I'll step back a, a second. I'll, I'll show, you know, kind of where I started with. So I grabbed your album details. And actually, let me see. Yeah, that's going to work. So I grabbed your album details, and here it all is, right? So I just grabbed that HTML. Mm -hmm. And then I did file new project MVC, and I threw it into the home view. Okay. And then I also made the beginnings of moving this into uh, you know, a M full MVC application. So I've got here an album class and a track class. So my album includes a list of tracks. And then I scaffolded this out. So I went in and scaffolded out this view. And so here's my view. Ah, OK, and so my back end as well. So let's look at that controller. So here in the home controller, 
This is, of course, normally you'd be passing in an ID. This would be details for each different one. But so I'm calling, you know, get album and then returning that as my view. And this is really a view model here. This, this album is because it's kind of rolling up a few different things. All right. So there's that. So now let's take a look at our front end code and see how we did with that. Uh, any any good questions you see coming in yet? Or? Uh, no, so far everything's you you've uh, actually answered most everything. So okay. we're we're still kind of plugging along here very well. Cool. Okay. So let's look at you know kind of the workflow steps that I did here. So I went in and I renamed my .css file. I named it to .less. Okay. And it was immediately when I did that it was valid less. Now, if uh, then, well, so there's some steps here, but so all this stuff up here, this is just standard CSS. Nothing fancy. That was in my original, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but when I renamed it to less dot, or site dot less, then every time I save it, it goes through and it actually compiles it over onto the right here. Oh, okay. So, so you just show me how you open that back up again. You. Um... Okay, so this actually, right when I created it, it was split screen like this. Oh, okay. All this right. is Visual Studio support, but it's uh, I moved it over here just so I. Can I got gotcha. you. Okay. And also for the big reveal, right? Just, <laughs> hey, so. yeah. Okay. So, so over on the left is all of your less. Visual Studio is creating all of the appropriate CSS for you. Mm-hmm. So it's compiling that in. So, and you'll see here uh, changes the order of things, um, all that kind of stuff. So then, what I did was I created this bootstrap folder inside my application, and I grabbed a bunch of mix-ins and components and things that I wanted to use. So I just started grabbing these and throwing them in. Okay. Um, so I said, you know, here I've, I've got forms, and I've got grid, and I've got this and that, and, and just kind of move them all in there. Yep. Um, so uh, then I... Let me see. And honestly, a good amount of this is trial and error. Like I said, okay, I know I need, the main ones you'll need is variables. You'll almost always need grid, utilities, and mix-ins. And then I would go in and I would say, well, I'm trying to use a button, and it's saying mix-in not found. So right. I, guess I, I guess I need to include that one. Okay. So um, they're, they're pretty obviously named for the, for the most part. So here, um, I'm going to show you a little trick here. If I go in here and I say explorer dot. This is kind of a neat trick. If you say explore dot, that's going to open up explore in that same oh, folder. Didn't okay. know if you knew that. And then just to kind of go backwards, you can say cmd dot, and that'll open up a command prompt there. So if you if you need to hop back. <laughs> and forth between. So here are all these are, and I just did the, the old drag and drop right into Visual Studio. Okay. So By the way, since you're back in Visual Studio, if you don't mind my asking, uh, IntelliSense support. Yeah, IntelliSense support is actually really good. So I can go in and I can start, like as I as I went in and started typing things, I can say, you know, um, uh, you know, all, all this stuff. Um, I can say import. Um, I can say um, as I'm in here editing. So here, like I did, if I say dot make. Oh, okay, yeah, perfect. So here I said make md column, or I can say M md pull, mm -hmm. and then make that 10. Now, and that's, and that's very cool. There's actually two little things that I want to highlight here. Mm -hmm. um, number one, up towards the top on the nav section, somebody had asked in particular actually about the, the nav and the fact that you need like five different things set up on, on, on the nav to get that all to Absolutely. work. Absolutely. You now have it. all of that combined in one shot there. Yeah. Just nav is now, nav bar, nav bar inverse, fixed top, and then it's also flagged as a container. Yep. And I'm going to show that nav bar section off a little bit more in a section. Okay. In a, in a second. So first I'm starting with your HTML, but I'm so glad you pointed that out because I would have forgotten it otherwise. So we're going to start with me converting your HTML, and then I'll show you me converting File New Project MVC over as well also. Perfect. Okay. okay. With and the layout and Did you that. do anything special to Visual Studio here? Nothing. Nothing fancy. Th no, this, this is, is right out of the this box. Is built in. So if I was to run down to fill in local store here, pick up a shrink wrap copy of Visual Studio. Yep. Could you actually find a shrink wrap copy of? Maybe on you know. Like How many Microsoft floppies would that be? On? That, that, no, yeah. that's interesting. I don't um, but uh, but anyway, okay, fantastic. So, so this is just right there. Just just to really point out what you're saying, right click, add new item, less style sheet, start typing. Just 
Okay. Yeah. And you can copy and paste content off of that lesscss.org. So even if fantastic. you're doing nothing with Bootstrap, less is really actually pretty fantastic. Just so less is more. Le oh, you did it. Now you did it. <laughs> okay, so, so here's what I wanted to do. I've got your HTML, which is, you know, it's functional. It's, it does what you need to do in order to you know, get Bootstrap working. You may want to start with this, actually. You may want to start just building out, get all your classes, and get all this stuff working, because it's not that hard to change it. But there's some problems with it. One problem. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> what code, man? There's okay. Some problems with it. Well, so, so one thing is we've got all these classes everywhere. Another is that there's a lot of div, 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 which is all right, but they call this div-itis, where you've got a lot of div <laughs> tags when what you really want is, you know, uh, you want the HTML5 semantic markup tags. Right? right. So I went through and kind of worked top to bottom, and I tried to use sections and articles where possible. The, the idea is a section is kind of a grouping on a page, and then within that you can have multiple articles and you would think of an article as something that you might possibly, like if it might fit in an RSS feed or something, if you might have several of them and it would make sense, then that, that's considered an article. So I got rid of m almost all the divs out of here. And again, it's not because I hate divs, it's just this is a little bit easier to read if I've got, you know, okay, this is obviously an article. So then working... You hate divs and you know it. <laughs> I'm not a fan of divs. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so here I'm going to go in and... Let's put these side by side. All right, so here I'm going to go there and there. And I think that's going to work for me. OK. And I'm going to close. Just trust me that it compiles to CSS, but you don't need to see exactly how. So then working through top to bottom, I say, OK, I had uh, this. So let's look at that main with the banner area, so the album details area. So if I go up there, I've got div class equals container body content. So I said, I would rather call it, so that's this. Okay. And I said, instead, I want to call that a section with an ID or a class of main. Okay. Really, I could have called it ID of main. That might have made more sense. But so then, so that's my container. So then I just go in here, and these are actually mix-ins. And this is cool. So when I hover over these, I've got to zoom on this. Visual Studio is showing me what that mix-in is generating. Oh, it's pretty darn awesome! How right? cool! So this is saying, okay, container actually calls container fixed and then has some media queries in there. All and right. if I wanted to go back and keep using command line and grunt, I could. You could. Okay. <laughs> Not that I want to, but I could. You sure could. Yep. Knock yourself out. Okay. <laughs> so that's how I work top to bottom here. So I said I want to. So I looked at this. And then I said, I also, while I was at it, I went in and I added in a class of main, right? And then, uh, then I s added those additional ones, and then I changed this. So I called this a section, yep. section main, and then later on down, I've got a section of banner. Um, so let's look at that one, section banner. So banner was a jumbotron before. Okay. So div class equals jumbotron. And bef this, you can ignore this, this actually isn't needed here, but in order to support an A tag inside of a Jumbotron, I needed those mix in. So they're exactly the same as the class that I would assign, that bootstrap class. Mm -hmm. It's just the, um, it's just showing it, you know, with that, um, these are using mix ins instead to generate those classes. All right? Now, um, just as a, um, um there was a question in here. Oh, um, sorry, this is a slight tangent. Um, somebody actually did the math. Um, it would take uh, 2,035 uh, floppy disks for Visual Studio. Wow. There okay. All right. I'll stop by the store. Yep. <laughs> okay. So, so we started simple here. This is we, we set up the container, um, and then we set up this Jumbotron area at the top. So now let's get a little bit more tricky. We want to set up this area, and this is using a lot of the grid stuff, right? So I would prefer to call this something like, uh, I believe I called this section album overview. Okay, so you can see I've mapped these over all these classes. I said first of all, I need my album overview. I'm going to rename this here. I'm going to rename this div to an article and give it a class of album overview. And then I need it to be a row, and that's actually all I need this div to have. 
is class row. All right. So I just used this mix in. I said art, article album overview and gave it class of row. Okay, so you just said, uh, so I want you to have a row, and then underneath there I want you to have an image, and underneath there I want you to have a div. Yeah, so here I'm taking advantage of a feature in less that allows for nested selectors. Okay. This is really cool. So instead of, like, normally if you want to take advantage of cascading in CSS, mm -hmm. you have to write these long selectors, and you have to say, article